this is one of the most interesting watches I've had on my channel to date. Why? Well, for several reasons. Firstly, it's an independent brand with an in-house movement. It's also a true traveler's GMT and offers excellent specs all around. This watch can also be optimized or optioned in so many areas, that's extremely impressive. It already features 72 hours of power reserve, it's got a silicon hairspring and escapement for excellent anti-magnetic properties. The in-house movement has a gold-plated tungsten micro rotor that itself can be upgraded to platinum if you so desire. And the watch also offers an array of FKM rubber strap choices. And even though this watch offers so many rubber strap choices, the supplied bracelet and this impressive on-the-fly clasp offers 10 millimeters of adjustment in one millimeter increments. Now this is not a perfect watch, and in my week of wearing this on the wrist, I'm gonna tell you exactly where the watch excels and exactly where it falls short. Let's check this thing out. I've got in my hands the Harage Superseed GMT, an independent watch company with quite a few bells and whistles, as you're gonna see. Now the watch quality is already on an extremely high standard, featuring 904L stainless steel, COSC certification, and an exceptional wearing experience with its very thin profile. And the reason for its thin case is attributed to the fact that this watch has a micro rider on that in-house K2 movement. That shaves a few millimeters off its dimensions. The specs do say that this case height should be around 9.85 millimeters. However, I measure 10.4 mil to the top of that double dome sapphire crystal. Now I did say that the watch is not a perfect watch because for me, it begs the question in some areas. But firstly, you saw the pop-up. This video is sponsored by Harage. However, as far as the review content goes, they have no input whatsoever. And in saying that, let's dive straight into the specs of this watch. Now I measure a case diameter of exactly 39.5 mil with a case height of 10.4. The lug to lug is 47.1 and a lug width with the integrated bracelet at 16 mil. The watch has a 6.2 millimeter sign screw down crown. It is surrounded by crown guards and the watch features 200 meters of water resistance. And the total weight size to my 18 centimeter wrist comes in at exactly 128 grams. Looking at the watch overhead, you can see on my wrist, it's sitting beautifully. Even that lug to lug distance of 47.1 has been great. Now the height is the hero of this watch. It really is a very nice slender profile. The massive taper on that bracelet also adds to its wonderful comfortable experience. And the very fine micro adjustability in that clasp, I really cannot fault. And speaking of that bracelet, as you can see the taper is from 21.7 mil all the way down to 15.8. The end links, 16 mil on the integrated bracelet, they do, however, protrude outwards. So the total lug to lug I measure, instead of 47.1, comes in at 51.4. Some people might find that a hindrance, although as you can see, it falls straight down. I've had a real good experience on the wrist. In fact, it's been extremely comfortable. But bear that in mind, if you have a narrower wrist, there might be some slight overhang. The end links are secured to the case via hex screws and a specialized tool is also shipped with each watch. So if you wanna change out this bracelet and put an FKM rubber strap on, the tool that unscrews these screws will also be supplied with a watch. The bracelet is held together with a pin and collar system and to me, that's been a big surprise because I honestly expected screw pins on this because the rest of the quality of this watch is fantastic. But even in saying that, I've had situations in bracelets where screw pins themselves have unthreaded because of Loctite failure or something similar and the bracelets come off and the watch has fallen to the ground. So pin and collar system, screw pins, pick and choose, whatever works for you. And moving over to this clasp, as you can see, fully milled, exceptional quality. The micro adjustability on this clasp is really of a top level. I think in this department, they've done really well. 10 millimeters of movement in one millimeter increments. It's been so comfortable on the wrist, zero complaints there. Now I did say at the start of this video that the watch can be optioned. And as you can see, one of the things that bugs me is the polished center links on this bracelet. However, they do have an option where you can get a bracelet that's fully satinized instead. Fully brushed for a more tool aesthetic. So whatever fingerprints I've had an issue with on this particular watch, you can eliminate that problem with the right choice of bracelets. 
Now if we turn the watch over and we have a look at that exhibition case back, it features a sapphire crystal and behind that crystal we've got the in-house K2 Micro Rotor GMT. It features 72 hours power reserve, a silicon hairspring and escapement, screw balance regulation, nicely hand finished Cote de Genève and quadratic black gold bridge. And looking at the Micro Rotor on this one, it's actually a tungsten rotor that's gold plated. But there is the facility again to upgrade this to platinum. So depending on how deep your pockets are, this independent brand is offering you, the end user, the customizable choices. Now if I turn my attention to the watch dial, this is where it gets very interesting. And also begs the question in a couple of areas. You see, this colorway I have in my hands is the Atoll Blue. But the watch also comes in several other colorways. From white, translantic blue, they've also got boreal green and jet stream grey. So there's a couple of different varieties to choose from depending upon your stylistic choice. Now they call this watch the All-Terrain GMT and I've been using this watch as a standard timepiece because you're probably looking at that dial and thinking all you can see is two hands. You've got a 24-hour day-night indicator, you've got a power reserve indicator at the 12 and you've got a nice frame date window at the 3. So how does this work? Well, if we unscrew the crown, we get a healthy pop, a single click, and you can see the movement has not been hacked. So if I move this crown clockwise, we can adjust that hour hand. So if you can have a look, and as you can see, the hour hand has moved and it's revealed underneath another hour hand. And what that is, that's a skeletonized home hand. In other words, if I was to travel somewhere, a different location, this now is the local hour or the local time where I've traveled to and this is my home time. So that's where I left, that's where I am. Depending on how many hours I've gone forward, you can just lock that in, screw it down and away you go. So where I've traveled to, that's the local time. If I want to know what time it was at home or what time it is, there it is. And because it's slaved, if I was to continue on my journey, as you can see, doesn't matter what time my local hour is, six o'clock, the home time is 11 in the morning. Because that indicator, that 24 hour indicator indicates my home time. So that's quite ingenious, I like that. But for me, this is where the problem lies because you notice that I moved that local time forward. That's great. If I was to hack this, in the first position again. So I can still move it forward. If I wanna go back, I can't. What happens when I go back? The date changes. So I would have expected this to be able to go back. So let's say I've finished my journey. The only way to put that hand back into position is to basically go forward again. And away you go. But in doing that, we've created a problem. Let me show you why because I've hacked the movement again, and I go forward past midnight. You see the date's changed, but the date shouldn't have changed because we're not at midnight. We're actually at midday. So to ideally get that back to the right position, I need to hack it once, move forward another 12 hours, and now I'm in the right position. So what's happened now, now if I was to go past the midnight, six o'clock and as you can see we're approaching midnight there's the midnight indicator look at the date it's changed so now we're spot on again so that's a bit of a double handling for me because now that date i have to also adjust that i also have to adjust the date to get it back to the appropriate date because now i'm back home so for me, it is a true GMT in regard to changing the local time and keeping the home time set, which is great, but I can't go backwards. But in saying all that, having that hour hand going only in a clockwise direction, the watch has also managed to maintain a quick set date. So you basically got the best of both worlds. Some people would have preferred the hand going clockwise and anti-clockwise, but in doing that, you've lost your quick set date. So quite ingenious what they've done, it's got its pluses, but it's also got its minuses. Now, if I turn my attention to the Sapphire Crystal, it's a double dome sapphire. It has anti-reflective coating on the underside. I've not had an issue throughout the week. The legibility has been good and the dial has been very clean. So in that regard, well done. 
Now you've probably also noticed that the bezel is a count up bezel. It's like a diver's watch. So having an inverted triangle that's loomed at the 12, you can turn this, it's a unidirectional 120 click. So you can turn this very nice. It's, it's actually got zero back play, which is good to see. And the lining up is perfect. And as you can see, the knurling on the side of that bezel, there's twin knurlings. So grabbing this with that 45 degree bevel has been really easy. Lastly, looking at the loom of the watch, the watch features Swiss Superluminova. It's very good. It's not exceptional, like if this was a specific dive watch, but for a travel sports GMT, I think it's doing great. I did say that the watch is fully customizable. And as you can see from their webpage, you can change quite a few things from the micro rotor, the bracelet to an FKM rubber strap. You can buy the watch in an option with the rubber strap. You can buy the strap alone. You can buy the bracelet alone. There's also different colorways as we spoke. I like that they allow the end user to be able to control that. And looking at the prices, that might seem a little bit high for some people. I get it. But you've got to remember, this is an independent brand with in-house movement. And I believe living with this for the better part of a week, to me, it seems that they're trying to bring a more high horology product into a more affordable range. Now let's move on to the pluses and minuses. Let's talk about the negatives of the watch. And for me, the fact that it has an integrated bracelet, it really means you're limited to this bracelet and those FKM rubber straps. It would have been nice if it was just a standard 20 mil. I can put whatever I want on this. That would have been so much easier. Another negative for me, the lug to lug distance is also extended to 51.4 with these integrated end links. So people with smaller wrists might find this a little bit bigger on the wrist, although it does wear well. I want to also touch on the symmetry of this watch. You've got a power reserve at the 12, you've got a frame date window at the three and a 24 hour day night indicator at the nine, but it's slightly recessed in. So it's not balanced. For me, it, this looks more of a tool aesthetic and it's, I've got to be honest, it's actually been very functional. Everything's been laid out in a particular way where I can see it, I can read it. So more so it's designed to be used as a tool, but a slightly blinged up tool with shine and it's 904L. And probably the last negative, again, I've touched on this, is the price. With that sort of money, there's a few other options. Whether you can get a watch with all these features for that money, in that department, this watch is doing very well. Moving away from that, what are the positives of this watch? Well, you got 904L stainless steel, very corrosion resistant for your salt water. So as a traveler's watch, you really don't have to worry about rinsing this out in a hurry. It's got great build quality, excellent finishing, very good attention to detail. The movement has been excellent visually as well as in its performance. It's COSC certified. Like I said, it's a pretty movement with your gold platinum micro rotor, the silicon hairspring and escapement, the 72 hours power reserve. It's been a solid workhorse. The customization of this watch is also another plus. The wearability, the impressive clasp, having 10 millimeters on the fly in one millimeter increments. So there's a lot of good stuff going on with this watch. Being an independent, I think they're throwing a lot of thought and innovation into this piece. It's not perfect, but it's definitely offering a lot of bang for your buck and knocking on the doors of a lot of those major brands. I'll leave all the links in the description, guys. Let me know what you think. This is the Haraj Superseed K2 GMT. It's been easy on the eyes and easy on the wrist, especially with that comfortable bracelet and clasp. Wanted to try something different, here it is. Hit me up in the comments, let me know your thoughts about this. Let me know what you think about this independent brand or even this watch itself. If you have any other input, by all means, feel free. That's what the comment section is there for in these videos. Lastly, stay well, stay safe, and we'll see you all in the next video.